fucking taste in the world. We're going to talk about True Blood for a minute. So if you're not caught up, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, stop listening right now, pass forward, you know, a few minutes. But let's get into True Blood. Okay. This season, you, you, producer Dick has just gotten turned on to True Blood this past month and has now binge-watched up until the current episode. So he's all caught up. He's gotten it all in one big block. In in two weeks, all seven seasons I've watched. Holy shit. That's a lot. Okay. So, is it me, or is this season not the thank you season to all of the gays out there who have been watching oh, True Blood absolutely. all these years? Because up until season seven, it was always a, gay was always a tease. Yeah. There was that gay tease there to keep us in there. There's always hot guys. You yeah, know. always hot guys. There was hot always straight guys. Shirtless guys. Always guy ass. The closest thing we got to gay sex was when Eric fucked that one uh, vampire who was Russell Edgington's lover, and he just uh-huh. staked him halfway through. Like that was all we got up but until season seven. Season seven is a little different. It, it has blown the doors off. I mean, first off, you get. I mean, okay, and this is the moment that all gay True Blood fans I really think have been waiting for. We get to see a love scene between Eric and Jason, and even if it's only a dream, that is a hot fucking dream. I've been having that dream for years, <laughs> and they finally put it on the show. So, the, yeah, there's that, and then there's the whole Lafayette gay lover who's a vampire who's incredibly sexy. Oh, he's so hot. And, you know, there's a controversy about that character, you know, a, guy, a different guy you saw last season, a different guy played him in season six, that character. Yeah. And he found out that his character was going to become a gay character, and so he had a bitch fit about it and demanded they change the script. And guess what? He's HBO gone. fired his ass. <laughs> because guess what? You're not bigger than HBO. You're not bigger than True Blood. You're a bit player. Like, that's the thing he needs to understand. And he should have been fucking grateful for that role. So who is your absolute favorite character on True Blood? Who's the sexiest Oh, guy the sexiest is Jason Stackhouse. I love Ryan Quantum. Uh, that actor, see, I, he is so fucking he, sexy. He is sexy, but I... In a, I mean, from, from season one, uh-huh. I was in love with Eric. Oh, yeah. Well, Eric is also Eric incredibly could, sexy. Eric could bite me any day. Yeah. See, Eric's sexy in that dominating kind of way. But what I found was so hot was when they had the scene with each other, you know, they had their love scene in season seven. Um, Eric was kind of the bottom, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, Eric was the one getting thrown on the bed, and Eric was the one who yeah. was ass up. It was kind of hot. Like, I didn't it know, was. I didn't know the hottest thing about that whole scene. Of course, you know, and Jason wakes up in church. Boner, that's hilarious. I love that. <laughs> that was good. I loved that scene. So, um, yeah, I, Jason Stackhouse to me is just, he is so fine. Like, he is a, he's all kinds of sexy. He's a dumb redneck. You know, he's, he's that type of guy that if you dated, he would just kind of do what you say. Like, he goes with the flow. You can, you can really, I mean, let's just see, I mean, all the girls he's ever been with. You know, Violet, she played him like a fiddle until the mm-hmm. end. And Jessica, she's got him wrapped around her finger. He just plays it. Like, he... But at the same time, he gets it. Like, you know, he's a smart... He's a dumb guy. He's also a smart guy. Like, he knows how to please a woman. And hopefully knows how to... In my dreams, he knows how to please a man, you know. <laughs> and uh, Ryan Quantin, also a gay ally. He loves the gays. He actually starred in a... Uh, he's Australian, by the way. My two favorite kind of guys. It's kind of... Number one is that lovely country boy who's respectful, but at the same time is very sexy, a little and slow. And dirty. And a little dirty, yeah. Dirty, he's got to be in there. Yeah. that. So basically, Jason Stackhouse. We ain't talking about mud either. Well, we could be. <laughs> Jason, But Jason Stackhouse yep. is who I'm talking about. And then he's played by the actor, Ryan Quantin, who is an Australian. Who That's my other type of guy, is an Australian beach boy. So whether he's playing a character on TV or he's just being himself, he's fucking sexy. Like, he is all kinds of sexy. And then there's all kinds of sexy people on there. You got, like I said, Eric. He's a fucking Viking. Like, he is with a, with a short haircut. It's like if a Viking trimmed his hair and got a modern look, that would be Eric. And it's hot. He's a thousand-year-old vampire. There's nothing sexier. 
And then you got other. I mean, I guess Bill's hot to some people. He's not my cup of tea. You know who I find attractive? Who do you Hoyt. find attractive? Hoyt. You know, I was going to just ask you that because you know, Hoyt is all kinds of cute. I I I, I love. I absolutely love hot guys, hot-looking guys. But the ones that are fun aren't necessarily the hot-looking guys. They're the kind of guy-next-door kind of guy. Well, what I find sexy, I love that lovely country doughboy look. Where uh-huh. they're not where they're not sculpted, while I love Jason Stackhouse, and he's going to be number one for that nice sculpted body. Right. There is something that's very sexy about a guy who's country-strong, and I say that as, like, he doesn't go to the gym and lift weights and get himself sculpted, but he can pick up a 75-pound pound bag of cement like it ain't nothing, or lift heavy shit. Pick up, he could probably pick up a big-ass rock and just move it from one to the other. That, there's something to be said about a guy who's country strong, who looks like he's big because he works on a farm, and he eats 10 eggs a day. Like, that's, there's something hot about that. And maybe it's because I'm a little guy. Maybe it's because I'm a skinny... Bean pole. And spoiler alert, spoiler alert, he was the star of last week's True Blood. Oh, yeah, man. Last week's True Blood, it just tears your fucking heart out, that whole episode. That whole episode, you just feel like, man, you just want Hoyt to remember. And you know that's what Jessica wants the whole time. So we could do a whole separate True Blood podcast, I swear to God. I mean, <laughs> HBO should pay me. I could do a whole podcast on any of them. But, uh, oh yeah, True Blood is amazing. My favorite season, though, I have to go with the Russell Edgington season. Like, that shit was crazy. When he, like, when he just fucking punched that newscast through the chest, that shit got real. Like, that was, you know, that's when the show got really crazy. My least favorite season, the one with all the fairies in it, but the big fairy season was kind of, ugh. I'm glad they only went to that fairy world, like, once. You know what I'm saying? Like, but they were half fairy dancers. Yeah, but there's hot guys all over that show. Yeah, that's yeah. true. When do you want hot fairy dancers? You want Al C and all the hot werewolves? Well, you know, I think, I think people kind of sort of are intrigued by werewolves and vampires. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, it's the Twilight Syndrome. But see, unlike Twilight, these are actual vampires. They can't go out in the sun. They don't sparkle. They catch themselves, they, if they go out in the sun, they burst into fucking flames. Like, they don't, they're not inconvenienced by the sun. They can't go to high school in but Portland But I think we don't have that, historically, we don't have that kind of, a, you know, fairies are for kids. My fairy godmother. Yeah, fairies in this show are fucking creepy looking. Yeah. They're like little trolls and shit. But, uh, oh yeah, man. And, and you know, another thing that makes that show great, I think it makes it gay-friendly, is the female power dynamic on that show. There's a lot of powerful women on that show. Never mind Sookie. Sookie, I'm going to be honest, is my least favorite character on the show. I don't know if that's how you feel. And I do not connect with And the Sookie. whole show is based on Sookie. It's a po- she's the main character, and she's my least favorite part of the show. Like, every time she comes on, I'm like, ugh, time to check my face, look at my phone. Uh-huh. Like, I just re- really, sorry, I can't deal with you crying anymore, and having to decide between mm. Bill or I Eric or Bill or Alfie. I love you. A, I love you. She's a slut, dude. She's a total slut. Slut. Now, on the other hand, you have strong female characters like Pam and Tara, who I think are excellent representations of powerful women, especially, especially I mean, Pam. Pam. Pam is a hardcore oh, yeah. woman. And, like, you know, she's Eric's progeny. She's, like, Eric's daughter figure. She'll do anything for him. She loves him. She is hardcore. She's playing like vampire Russian roulette a few episodes back. I mean, that she's crazy. And uh, that's one of the reasons I think a lot of women, I think a lot of lesbians like the show because of that. Never mind the fact that Tara and Pam are kind of on again, off again. It's a weird relationship between the two of them because Pam, like, turned her into a vampire. Well, now she's, Tara's fucking dead, so spoiler alert. I hope you're not. <laughs> hope you didn't fast forward right to that if you've missed all of season seven. But yeah, so Tara's fucking dead. So that whole thing is completely but, unresolved. But the great thing about a show like True Blood is, just because you're dead doesn't mean you're off the show. Oh yeah, you can come back and you can come back in weird trippy dream sequences where you're tied to a cross with a snake and you're speaking in tongues. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck that was all about. That's some weird voodoo shit. But you know, anything to get Lafayette in the show. His Lafayette's aunt, or Tara's mother, she's also a crazy-ass character, and you got to, like, the other... So this past week, Hoyt was kind of the star, 
There was another mm-hmm. star of the show. It was definitely Tara's mother. Absolutely. And it's because you and got it's it. the first time. Mm-hmm. In seven seasons, she's been a crazy fucking alcoholic. Drug addict. The drinking drug addict. Crazy the woman. Crazy woman. And this... This, this yeah. just this this last season, you, just you actually finally, the last couple of shows. This final episode, this last episode, you finally see what it was all about and what got her started down this path. And well, I think the whole burying the gun in the yard thing was kind of a weird resolution. I think personally, and if you're out there and you write for HBO, you can feel free to tell me otherwise. But it feels like to me they figured out we're going to have Tara have them look for something and they didn't necessarily know what it was she was looking for until a few weeks later when they filled in the gap. Like, it seemed kind of weird, but you actually got a glimpse into Hattie Mae's uh, past and, like, what kind of put her down the path of being an alcoholic. And you're right. She was the second star of the show. It was like this, she, was her B story, she was the B storyline. No Sookie this week. Maybe that's why I liked this episode so much. Very yeah. little Sookie. Sookie-less. I like that. Yeah. I hope she dies before the end of this thing. Because it's the final <laughs> season, there's only a few episodes left. Well, it's based on a book about Sookie, so... Well, they've changed a lot, though. Oh, well... The book is very different from the show. In fact, I have a friend on Facebook. Every week, it's like, she watches it, and it's just like, Sunday night, you just get, Fuck this show! It's so different from the book! Ah, and I'm like, why do you watch it, then? Like, if you're going to be upset every week when you watch it because it's different from the book, why watch it, like... And it's possible to like things that are a little different. Like, I like the Harry Potter books. I also like the Harry Potter movies. They're very, there are a lot of differences. There's whole characters. There's Dude, whole, you read? You can read? I Holy read a lot. Shit. I can read real good, sir. I got the three R's down reading, writing, and arithmetic. Sure. Um, so we're kind of coming to the end of the podcast. And I just wanted to say something that was important. You know, I was talking about Robin Williams and his death earlier and depression, and how we need to recognize that. And if anybody out there uh, does need someone to talk to, um, there's this great group called The Trevor Project. And you can call them at 1-866-488-7386. And if you ever need to talk to somebody, there's somebody there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, ready to help you out and talk to you. And it's really important. You can contact them at... uh, the Trevor Project, uh, dot org. You know they have it just via chat if you want to do it that way. Whatever's comfortable for you. But if you need to speak to somebody and you feel like there's nobody to talk to, there is. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, so just check out the Trevor Project if you need to. They're great people. They do great work. And uh, support them if you got the means. And uh, so this has been Gay Dixie this week. I'm Chase Oliver. And have a gay Dixie week.